Lord be with you. Let us take a moment of silence to center ourselves on God. All those able, please rise for our call to worship. In you, O oh Lord, we take refuge. In your righteousness, deliver us. Incline your ear to us and help us. Be a rock of refuge for us. Be a strong fortress to save us. You have redeemed us. Let us pray. Almighty God, in our baptism, you adopted us as your own. Quicken, we pray, your spirit within us that we, having renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
you may be seated. Well, I bring you good news this morning on behalf of the session of your church. Some of you heard earlier, prior to uh, the beginning of service, that the session is now permitting very soft singing of hymns and liturgical music, and I know that means a great deal to many of us. I do ask that you make the singing soft and not uh, like Pavarotti or anything uh, to that extent. So I was thinking that I needed to be, um, I don't know, real with, you, real with you today, honest. I had a conversation this past week with my cousin. We were having coffee together, and I expressed to her that I've been having a, a difficult time the last few weeks, and she said, you know, you just need to let the church know like you did back in May. And so I want to be honest with you that the last few weeks I've been having a really hard time. Um, they have been exceedingly difficult these last few weeks with respect to the virus and people taking different sides and um, making different demands or pleas. And um, it's wearing on me, and not just me, but uh, lay, um, laity who are in leadership positions, elders, other staff members, and I just want you to know that, that it's been very difficult. It's uh, taxing. Um, I've been feeling frazzled and frayed, as have other leaders in the church. So I guess I, I need you to know that if we want our church to continue moving in the very positive direction that it has been moving, I need you to give me grace, and I need your compassion I need your love. The elders and deacons and trustees of your beloved church need your compassion and your love and your grace. We are all doing the very best we can, and we realize that not everybody's going to be happy with every decision, but your elders, through a task force, are doing the very best faithful and prayerful work that they can possibly do, trying to move our church in a positive forward uh, direction and at the same time try to keep everyone safe. So while we may disagree on various and sundry things with respect to the virus and how the church is um, operating and moving forward, we expect you to be kind and we expect you to be grace-filled because everybody is doing the best they can with the information and the tools that we have. So I appreciate that, and I would also ask for your prayers for myself and my family, for your elders and deacons and trustees um, who are doing such great work right now, and what we need is your grace. So thank you for hearing me and um, standing with me during this time. At this time, I'd like to invite Joe and Marsha Howe forward, please for a moment of mission on our stewardship campaign. Hey, good morning. Um, my name is Joe Howell, as, as Hunter said. Uh, this is my wife, Marcia. We've been um, with the church now um, almost, almost a year or so, 10 months ago. We got about New Year's Eve or so. Um, unfortunately, we haven't met most of y'all as um, the first three months were awesome, and uh, it's been it's been a challenge since then to kind of get to know people, but we're getting there. Um, uh, we moved from the Panama City area with our family. Um, ben and Karis, our, our kids, they're not here with us right now, but um, they're really enjoying uh, the warm welcome of the church here as well. Um, what we were asked to talk about was, was stewardship uh, a little bit and our, our thoughts on that. Um, we have all struggled, we, all, we have struggled, uh, Marcia and I, with, uh, with tithing over the years and trying to find the right balance of that. And um, my parents were always very, um, were very good about it and very good at kind of talking to us about it and um, talking about making that leap of faith. And my mom would always said that, uh, that God's math will always make it work out in the end. Uh, and that's kind of a hard concept to, to really grasp. So uh, several years back, we made the leap and we decided to do our best to move towards tithing and gifts as required to, uh, to try to help um, bring blessings back uh, into the church and, and the community. And um, um, we, we try to make it 
from the first of the storehouse as you're supposed to and all, you know, and just say, set that apart and then roll forward from there and then, and then see how it works. And sure enough, the math has, has worked out, uh, you know, for the most part. I will say that um, you aren't, you know, there's always going to be struggles. There's always going to be car repairs. There's always going to be unexpected bills and things that will come up. Um, new air conditions put in houses and things like that. Um, like I said, we came from Panama City. Uh, we were part of that big hurricane that hit there about two years ago yesterday. And uh, it was really uh, devastating to the community um, and to everybody in general. So a lot of capital had to be reinvested back in property and in, uh, in, in trying to make that place better. But we've been able to stay the course with the giving. And I feel like in the end, what we've seen is more blessing than we, uh, than we ever anticipated, really. Um, not necessarily for us, but just out as we go, because it isn't our money to begin with, right? So as we push it back out there, seeing it, um, seeing, it see, seeing what it can do for the area. So we just want to say we're very happy for what we found here in this church. This church is alive. Uh, this church is well, and this church is doing um, a lot to bring that blessing back to, back to the community and, uh, and itself and to the glory of God. Um, yeah, so like my husband Joe was saying, um, we lived over in Panama City. And for me, um, our stewardship to the church is really about uh, what God is doing in the community, and it's enabling that. So like he said, um, our church over there, I mean, when our children's building was down to the, the steel frame, so it was very like a very tangible thing that our gifts would not only build the physical structure of the church, but our larger community as it was going out. And then coming here, seeing very much the same thing. We've all had a rough couple of months um, and seeing the church be alive and seeing our gifts through the church reach out to those who might feel a little less isolated, who might be struggling with faith or financial or whatever, um, just enabling God's work here in the community. So, Thank you all very much for your time. Let me pray our prayer of illumination. Gracious God, let your words fall afresh upon us today. Let them dwell deeply within us. Let us go forth from this place as a light to your world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? As this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it into a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that, I, that my wrath may burn hot against them and they may, I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, 
Why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it is with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Today's second lesson is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Hear now the word of the Lord. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Daya, and I urge Synthke to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, and whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. If you didn't know any better, you might think that St. Paul lived with his head in the clouds. You might think that he lived with rose-colored glasses. If you didn't know Paul back in the day, back before he became Paul, you'd swear from our reading in Philippians that he was an easy-going guy. But some of y'all know that Paul was once named Saul. And Saul, well, Saul was not a starry-eyed dreamer. Saul was a hardcore pragmatist. He was strategically ruthless. He believed in getting the job done no matter the cost. His head was not in the clouds, but it was on the earth. And he didn't mess around. Where Saul went, heads rolled. Literally. One time, Saul went so far as to have a man executed because the man admitted to following Jesus. In my mind, Saul was the antithesis to our lesson from the Philippians. Honestly, I've, 
I find it mind-blowing that a man who would have someone executed, a man who is sternly, dogmatically pragmatic, would ever say, let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your request to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. These words don't sound like the words of a man who was ruthlessly efficient. These words don't sound like the words of a man who worried endlessly about arresting followers of Jesus before himself becoming a follower of Jesus. These words from Philippians don't sound like words of a man who hunted Christians down. Maybe it's just my personality, but I have a ten tendency to trust words from someone who's lived on both sides of the fence. In this regard, St. Paul is a man after my own heart. I mean, he was a fellow who was stridently opposed to faith in Jesus, but then became a follower of Jesus. And he's a guy who probably didn't have much peace at all, but in the letter he tells us that he knows the peace that surpasses all understanding. So when he says not to worry about anything, but to bathe your life in prayer, I tend to listen. I listen to him because he is speaking from his own hard-won, God-given experience. On October 25th of this month, we will present our pledges for 2021. And I will readily admit that these are perhaps difficult times to make a financial pledge to your church. There is, of course, the pandemic. There is division in our nation over race. We are in the midst of an acrimonious election cycle. And here I stand asking you to financially commit yourselves to the well-being of the church that you love. In a time when so many people are worried about so much, I'm asking you all to not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, perhaps more than at any other time in your history or my history, our faith will be tested. Our faith in God's ability to provide for us and our church. I'm asking us to take a leap of faith in 2021 to bank on God's provision. I am asking you to put your faith to the test. 
I'm asking you to go out on a limb and generously pledge your support to your church. I fully recognize that I am perhaps asking more of you all this season than in any of the 20 years of my ministry. I am asking us to trust God more fully so we can give more generously. I am asking you not to hedge your bets, but to bet on God. The question facing us all is this. On the other side of COVID-19, which is not that far away, I mean, it may be three months or six months or maybe a year, that's not that far. And so the question is this, what do you want your church to look like when this is all over? If there's one thing that I have learned and I know to be true, when you bet on God, your bet is assured. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so may you and me and everyone who is a member of this church take the leap of faith and trust God with our lives, with our futures, and with our fortunes, believing that God will provide all that we need today and tomorrow. To God be the glory today and for all eternity. Amen. Let us stand and affirm what we believe using the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
may be seated. We are all called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. Within the community of the church, some members are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of the word and sacrament. The session representing the one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, the session of Memorial Presbyterian Church, now installs Marie McCready on the session. Marie, I will now ask you the constitutional questions. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you? Do you accept the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ, in God's word to you, do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among colleagues in ministry working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? And finally, will you be a faithful elder watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving and governing bodies of the church and in your own ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? Do we, the members of the church, accept these brothers and sisters, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation, to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We repeat, we do. Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church and we'd repeat we do the lord be with you let us give thanks to the lord it is right to give our thanks and praise gracious and eternal god throughout the ages you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation we thank you for men and women in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Marie, who has taken up the mantle of leadership in your church. Grant her the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Give her a spirit of truthfulness that she may know the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Give her the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision in the walk of faith and for the work 
of ministry, give her gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Amen. Marie, I am happy to announce that you are now an elder for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Lord. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please extend the peace of Christ to one another by waving or giving the peace sign at home. Feel free to give yourself a hug or text someone the peace of Christ that you know. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace, Marie. We now come to the time in worship where we join our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. In this moment of silence, let us pray for the world. God, our creator, you made all things in your wisdom and in your love you save us. We pray for the whole creation overthrow evil powers, right what is wrong, feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice so that all your children may freely enjoy the earth you have made and joyfully sing your praises. Let us pray for the church. Gracious God, you have called us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith and service, breaking bread together and proclaiming the good news to the world that all may believe you are love. Turn and turn to your ways and live in the light of your truth. Let us take a moment and pray for peace. Gracious God, we lift up all of our prayers to you. We lift up the prayers of the people in this congregation and in the community, those who are in pain and suffering from addictions, those who are coming to terms with a new diagnosis, those who seek your love. We now come together and pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to the time of offering. We have four ways that you can give. If you are here worshiping with us in the sanctuary, the offering plates are at each door. You can drop a check in there as you leave. If you are worshiping from home, uh, you may send a check to the church office. You may click the Give Now button on the church's website, or you may text STAMPC to 73256. 
Let us bring the offerings of our lives and labor to the Lord. Trust in you, shepherd of my heart, keeper of this heart of mine. Your patience knows no end. You've loved me back into your arms time and time again. So if I start to wander, like a lamb that's gone astray, I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. You're the beacon of my light, you're the sunlight of my days. I can rest within your arms, I can know. Let the cold winds blow and let the storms rage all around. I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. Giver of this life in me, you're what I. trust in you, shepherd of my heart. You're the beacon of my nights. You're the sunlight of my days. I can rest within your arms. I can know your loving ways. So let Let the storms rage all around. I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. I'll trust. Let us pray the prayer of thanksgiving that is printed in the bulletin, and it is responsive. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. God, we thank you for your surprising grace 
at work in our lives and for your love so freely and generously bestowed upon us in Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to the manifestation of your grace in the common and the ordinary so that each day for us may be a day of gratitude and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, I charge you today to go into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. And may the grace, peace, and mercy of God Almighty rest upon each of you this day and throughout eternity. Amen. Thank you.